looking gorgeous I'm, this is John. We're talking to Dustin. Justin Cantor from Semi Precious Weapons. How are you? I'm fucking fantastic. I walked off stage, I don't know, like 12 minutes ago at the movie. <laughs> it was a great show, right? It was a really great show. The crowd was fucking nuts. Um, which is exciting, because when you're the opening band, the opening, opening band, so there's us, Kid Cudi, and the Gaga, <clears throat> sometimes when people keep saying, oh, well, if you're first of three, the audience is going to be like, just getting into, no, no crazy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Right. They're crazy from the get-go. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm so fantastic, or <laughs> because everyone's so excited to see Gaga, but everyone has been, like, the crowd has been really I think crazy. it's equally, definitely. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit of both. A little yeah, bit of both. Yeah. yeah. So, you're opening for you guys. How does, how does that feel? It's amazing. It's really, I mean, it really is the best tour that there is out there, I think. Um, at least pop tour. And for us to be a crazy, filthy rock band opening for, like, the best pop tour in the world is really amazing. And also, I've known Gaga since, like, late 2006. Um, and her, like, her first couple shows as Lady Gaga um, were opening for us. So it's so trippy to see, you know, we were, like, playing, like, you know, we'd have, like, 300 people at the Knitting Factory in New York, which would be sold out. And we thought it was like the biggest thing ever. Yeah. Or like Gaga, I'll never forget, she came upstairs um, to the backstage after she opened for us at the new factory. And she gave me <clears throat> a pair of leopard print panties <laughs> for my birthday. And, which by the way, it was like two months late, my birthday present. <laughs> but, but that's, because she's so amazing. And she, she was in LA making her record, but was being so modest about what she was doing. We didn't know what she was doing. Mm -hmm. like, Where the fuck has Gaga been for two months? Like, yeah. What the hell? Because she was just making, you know, a small little humble record. Yeah, a small little album. <laughs> just a no little big album. deal. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> um, and so she came up, gave me the panties, and she was like, thank you so much for letting me open. I've never seen so many people. And now we're opening for her. Like, in Montreal, there was like 12,000 fucking people. That's, that's crazy. It's crazy. So it's really, and like, we played the Viper Room last Wednesday. Mm. And then it was sold out. We had lines like 200 people. And then flew to Montreal and played to 12,000. Wow. <laughs> Are the crowds any different? Or you're like... No, it's crazy because at least, you know, it, when you're playing to a huge stadium, all you can, you can hear everybody. I, you know, I want to make sure I, everyone feels love for me. But really, all you, only that you can see are the ones right here. Yeah. You can only see the first 200 people. So whether you're playing to 200 or 12,000, you can only see the 200. <laughs> so, in so many ways, it feels exactly the same. But then, like when you get online and there's like 2,000 tweets about you, yeah. you realize that you just played to a lot more than two A lot more, yeah, are. exactly. <laughs> so, for anyone who doesn't know who you guys are, how would you describe yourself to them? Oh, uh, we call it like, it's like filthy glamour. Mm -hmm. It's like rock and roll, like balls to the wall, just fucking like rock and roll, but, you know, like, it's filthy and it's glamour. Yeah. You know? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> And now you're signed to Interscope, and you're also a little bit signed with House, House of Gaga. Gaga. How did that even come about? Amazing. Um, well, we were, there was, we've been through, we have like the most typical, like up and down, trying to be a band story ever. Mm -hmm. Like, a guitar player leaving, a better one coming, a demo deal with this major falling through, a bigger deal with that major, that falls through, a bad indie deal two bad managers. I mean, it's just been, we should have quit like six months. <laughs> but so then all of a sudden we did the Perez Hilton tour. Perez mm -hmm. Hilton has been amazing to us. Um, we did the Perez Hilton tour. And then the sound, the Swedish band, the sound. Yeah. They had heard about how great we were doing on the Perez tour, asked us to join their tour. So we left in September and then just kept going from tour to tour to tour. And through doing those tours, um, Capital got interested, Warner got interested. Um, but they all wanted us to like, meet with like electronic producers and work with co-writers and we're like but we're a, a four-piece balls to the wall rock and roll mm -hmm. band like why are we gonna like i, I love pop music but yeah. why are we gonna like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not gonna it's not, it's, not, it's not the fucking point yeah so then luckily um ron fair at <coughs> geffen slash interscope yeah blah, blah blah heard our music and he called troy he, he called gaga's manager 
and was like, what the fuck is this? And they were like, oh my god, it's the best thing ever. And they called Perez, they were like, yeah, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> it was, it was like, Ron Perry heard our music on a Tuesday. On Thursday, he flew us to LA, because we, we were in Portland with the sound, okay. to meet with him. And on the following Monday, we were in the studio making a record for Interscope. It was like, <laughs> insane. And so, you know, since Gaga's at Interscope, and she, you know, she talks about us all the time, even before the tour. Mm -hmm. Um, it just kind of made sense to like have her be a part of the label situation yeah. as well. And I, are you rec are you still recording? or Are you done with the album? We're pretty much done. We um, there are five days off right now on the tour. Okay. So tomorrow we fly from the Glamour New York Airport to um, back to LA to finish the record. I love Newark Airport. <laughs> <laughs> like Newark stop. And then we'll, we finish the record in LA um, the next four days. And I know that Gaga and her. Or executive producer Vincent Herbert also executive produced your guys' album? Just got out as the executive producer. Just got out. Yep. Um, Vincent Herbert's label, Streamline, is also a part of it. Okay. So we have like the most glamorous label power you possibly could ever have. Yeah. Perez, Gaga, Streamline, Geffen, Interscope. It's, it's like glamour situation. Is it going to be more of the same sound or are you trying different things? Well, we, it's, it's definitely the, what we, what the mistake we made in the past when recording mm -hmm. is, is that like we want the energy of our live show. We want the rawness yeah. of the family of our live show. So we thought we could just go into the studio and like plug in and fucking play our live show. <laughs> but we learned that like we've got to like do, we've got to think about it in a different way to, to have that excitement translate. Because um, Jack Joseph Quigg was the producer and then Gaga executive producer. But what mm -hmm. Jack kept saying was like, when you're listening to your record, you only have one sense of hearing. When you're at a show, people can see you, they can fucking smell the people next to them, they can touch, they, like, they have everything. Mm -hmm. And so you can't just think of the record as playing your live show, you have to yeah. add other elements. And so, you know, I always get people dancing um, in our live show, but when you're just listening, like, especially in like 2009 or 2010, which we will be, when you're just listening to rock and roll, people's initial reaction isn't to just start dancing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so we added, um, it's still all just real instruments and real mm -hmm. everything, but we like really focused on like making sure people want to fuck while listening to our record.